Welcome to the Life United Podcast. We are all about helping you know God, find freedom, discover your purpose, and make a difference. We know that today's message is going to be a blessing to you. Um, the Lord just kind of dropped this, this understanding in my heart about hope. Hope is the road to fulfillment. Whatever that means, whether it means uh, eternity, whether it means a fulfillment of a dream, whether it means the fulfillment of a need, whatever it means, it's the road to fulfillment. Faith is the vehicle that carries you down that road. See, sometimes we have the idea that just having hope is enough. But hope is not just enough. In fact, uh, the Bible talks about Abraham when God promised him a son when he was old and when Sarah was old and, and when all natural hope was gone, the Bible said he hoped on in faith. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 says, Faith is the substance of things hoped for. So sometimes we need to be encouraged and, and set hope out there in front of us, but we really need to realize there's more to it. it that's the expectation. Let me explain it to you this way. You can go sit out there on I-20 all day long and hope you're going to get to Dallas. And you can talk about how wonderful it would be if you were in Dallas and, and, and you know, it, hey, Dallas is not that far and I see it and I mean, I know about it and, you know, and whatever that means to you and, you know, and in and, and your particular life, you know, and some people, well, I don't like Dallas. Well, that's, don't, just stay with me here, okay? Okay, I don't care for certain f football teams in Dallas, but, but anyway. Anyway, uh, you cannot come to this church and not be a Saints fan. All right. Anyway, uh, so you can do that all day long and, and dream of that fulfillment of getting there and doing what you want to do, and the, there's a hope that you're going to get there. But until you put that key in that car and start it up and you make a move toward Dallas, all you've got is hope. But faith is that vehicle that gets you from point A to point B, and you've got to put it in gear. You've got to move forward. You've got to do something. Well, I hope so. Listen. That, that term really does not, that, that's not a God term. Well, I hope so. God terms are, I know so. And hope will keep you strengthened as you go toward your no. But you, you've got to understand and realize that, that that's where, that we, we want that in our lives. We've got to have that in our lives. Um. That's our life on earth. Listen, walking by faith in what God's promised, and, and you know, it's a promise, and it's there for you. It's, it's a hope. It's an expectation. But the point is, you've got to go toward it. You've got to move toward it with your faith. And, and, and so you've got to you realize and understand that that's how we live our lives on, on earth today. Now, I want to back up now, and I'm going to go around the corner here uh, and, and show you how this works, okay? So if you read with me in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 11 and 12, I want you to listen to this. It says, therefore, remember, all right, you need to remember this, okay? This is going to help you. If you'll remember this, remember this, that you once were Gentiles in the flesh called the uncircumcision by what's called circumcision made in the flesh by hands. Now, remember this. At that time, you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers from the covenants of promise, <coughs> excuse me, having no hope. <clears throat> and without God in this world. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm going to have to drink some water today. 
Mm. <clears throat> Having no hope. <clears throat> I got a bug in my throat here. <clears throat> Having no hope. <clears throat> and without God in this world. Remember, every person in this room, and I don't know when you made Jesus the Lord of your life, <clears throat> but remember this, there was a time when you had no hope. <clears throat> you were without God in this world. <clears throat> well, that is, that's, that's negative, <clears throat> but it's also encouraging. Because that's the way we were, not the way we are. But see, every person was, without, was in this world without God. If, you were, if you're a Gentile, you're without God. And without God, you're without hope. <clears throat> no hope. No access to hope. Do you realize that's where the world is? They have no hope. They think they do. They think they got it figured out, but they don't. Because the only hope that you can have <clears throat> is in Christ Jesus. So the word says, remember when you didn't know God. Hey, I don't know about you, but I, 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 I remember living without God. And, and I, I don't try to hide that. Because it makes me realize, hey, I got God now. I got hope now. I got, I got something in my life now. <clears throat> I'm, not without, I'm not without an expectation of God working in my life. No, I got something. And I remember when I didn't. How many of you remember when you didn't? Yeah, I, I didn't. Listen, compared to where I am now in life, compared to where I was then, it's a joke. You know, I, I, I remember all my philosophies of life. I'm not even going to tell you. I'm being embarrassed to tell you how stupid they were. You know, trying to create some hope. <clears throat> trying to create something. I was talking one day to a doctor and, and, uh, and some other men, and, and he was talking about, you know, getting old. And he, well, he said, well, I don't care about dying. I just don't want to get old. <clears throat> I'm thinking, well, dude, you're on your way, man. You're already gray-headed. <laughs> but, but he wasn't a believer. But dying didn't seem like that big a deal. Well, it will when you take your last breath. It, it'll make a difference. But see, you have to remember, and I remember those days. I remember how I lived in those, in those days. And, and, and Ephesians talks about, and I'm not going to get into this today, but that we walked according to the course of the world, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and the dark reasonings or imaginations of the mind. We just kind of went where we wanted to go in our minds, in our thoughts. And <clears throat> some of you may have been a little bit more disciplined than I was, but, that's, but, but you still were just as much without hope as I was. Till Jesus came in your life. <clears throat> I, I remember those days. And I don't ever want to forget them. Because what happens is, uh, it talks about this in Hebrews, if you look back, there's always an opportunity to go back. But there's nothing there. I know people that have gone back. Everybody wants to help me today here. <laughs> I know people who have gone back thinking there's something back there. There's nothing there, folks. Because your hope is in the future. Your hope is not in the past. You can't live your life in, in the past and on, on how things used to be. You've got to go forward. You've got to get in that car and crank it up and go forward because that's where your hope is. That's where your fulfillment is, is moving forward in the kingdom of God. So you, you need to remember that. It also says that we were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. That doesn't mean a whole lot to us, sort of, you know, and, and, but, but let, me, <clears throat> and let me put another translation. It says we were shut out from the citizenship of Israel. 
shut out. In other words, we didn't have a covenant with God. We were shut out. Another translation says, strangers to God's chosen community. We had nothing. You had nothing. I remember before I got saved, God, God was dealing with me about salvation and, 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 and uh, someone would give me a book uh, called The Late Great Planet Earth and it almost scared the hell out of me. Almost. It didn't quite, but it almost got it out of me, you know, because I, I got to thinking about, wait a minute, I don't have any hope. If Jesus comes back, I don't have any hope. I'm not even sitting on the highway. I don't have any hope. I, re I remember that. I remember thinking about that. And I remember talking to, uh, when I was in the restaurant business at the time, and I remember talking to one of my friends. His name was Alan Kamen. He was a, a Jewish guy. And I said, Alan, tell me about God. I don't know anything about it. Tell me about God. And he looked at me and said, Man, I don't know anything about God. And I said, well, you're his chosen people. You ought to know something. He said, I don't know anything. <clears throat> so I remember not having any kind of community or understanding anything about it. Hey, I remember the foolish prayers I prayed before I got saved. Any of you ever prayed any of those? You know, God, if you get me out of this, I swear I'll be... <laughs> You know, and about the time he gets you out of it, you done forgot that promise. Don't look at me so holy. Man, I remember laying in the, in the bed when I was a young kid. I'd done something I had no business doing, and I thought I was going to get in big trouble. I remember laying in that bed saying, God, if you, could, you just, just get me out of this. Just get me out of this. That's all I knew. But I didn't have any hope. There was nothing there. It was empty. It says that we were that we're strangers from the covenants of promise. This, this is interesting. <clears throat> Today, most Christians are strangers to the covenants of promise, of God's promises. They've put everything off to heaven. Hey, the Bible says that we've got God in this world. If we didn't have God in this world, now I know our future is better than where we are now. I understand that. But that doesn't mean God's saying, well, when you get to heaven, I'll be nice to you. No, he's already made a covenant with us. He's already made promises to us. And, and the Bible says, listen, <clears throat> the Bible says, what the Amplified Bible says, we had no knowledge of or right in God's agreements. No knowledge or rights in God's agreement. Do you know God's got some agreements with you? And you have rights? And he's not ashamed of that? And he's not ashamed for you to talk to him about those? Another translation says, We are strangers to the covenants founded on God's promises. That's where we were. No hope. All the promises in the world are not going to help you without Jesus. You, you have no hope. Say, so, yeah, well, we've got all these promises, but, but, but I don't seem to be getting any of them. You know why? Because you're not in your car driving. Yeah. <clears throat> you're not going toward those promises. You're expecting those promises to come to you. Yeah. They've already been accomplished. Jesus has already paid the price. They belong to you, but you've got to go get them. You've got to go grab hold of them and, and you grab hold of it by faith. Your hope tells you they're there. You know, just think about this a minute. I have God in this world. That, that in itself will produce hope. But you've got to grab hold of something. And what you grab hold of are the promises that he has made because he is God and you are his. It says, having no hope and without God in the world. One translation says it this way. Listen. 
with the world about you and know God. <clears throat> with the world about you and know God. See, there are, there are thousands of people in Shreveport today that are doing all kinds of other things besides coming to church and worshiping God. <clears throat> They're in the world. The world's around them. They, some of them may not even be getting up yet because they don't know God. They don't know God. God's not part of their lives. Another translation says, I love this one. No God to whom you could turn. No God. We were without God. No God to turn to. Because the only way to turn to God is through Jesus. No God to turn to. <clears throat> That's the way we were living. That's the way we were living our lives. But listen. Here's the good news. Okay, grab hold of this. Listen to this. Because this is going to get you on the road. This is not going to get you sitting in the car. It's going to get you on the road. Listen to me. Listen. You have to know and understand that we now have a God who will help us in this world we live in. I don't know about you, but I need that bad. I need to know that I'm not on my own anymore. That if I have something in my life, God is right there to work with me. That He is my God in this world. He doesn't work like the world. He doesn't do it the way the world does. But He's my God and He works for me and works with me in this world. Because I'm not without hope anymore. I made Jesus the Lord of my life. But the moment I made Jesus the Lord of my life, God took me in. He made me His own. He literally redeemed me and adopted me as a son. He redeemed me and adopted me as a son. So I have a God that helps me live in this world. Amen. He's not just God out there, and when we get to heaven, we're going to see Him. And No, He's helping me now. He's helping you now. He will help you now. Galatians 4, 7. Let me read you this out of the Passion Translation. This will help you get this and understand this. Listen to this. Now... We are no longer living like slaves under the law. But we enjoy being God's very own sons and daughters. And because we are His, we can access, listen to this, we can access everything our Father has. Everything our Father has. For we are heirs of God through Jesus the Messiah. See, I got God in this world now. I have access to the Father. And not only to that, I have access to everything He has. You remember the story about the prodigal son? You know there was another son. There were two sons. You know that, right? There was a prodigal son, and he wanted his inheritance. And he took that inheritance, and he ran off, and he blew it, and ended up in a pig pen. <clears throat> but thank God he came back. He came back to, the, to his father, and his father welcomed him back. We always talk about that. But you know what? Then there was the Christian son who got upset because God was blessing that heathen that came to Christ. Now, you laugh at that, but I've actually seen that happen. I don't understand it. God's blessing them, and I've been serving God, and God hadn't blessed me like that. He got upset because the father blessed the son who came home. 
He said, you never did that for me. You never did that for me. You know what the father told him? He said, son, everything I have is yours. He had access to everything the Father had. That's what that's saying in Ephesians. We have access to everything the Father has. If God spared not His own Son, but delivered Him up for us all, how much more will He freely give us all things? Now, <clears throat> that ought to stir you up. Now, it's probably you're stirring up hope. But you know what? You can grab hold of that with your faith, and God will actually respond and will do something great in your life. Because I love what it says here. We are heirs of God through Jesus the Messiah. We have access to everything our Father has. That's us. That's us. Yeah, I know when we get to heaven. No, he's our God in this world. He wants to work for you in this world. He, he wants you to access something. What, what do you have in your life? What, what do you have that's a need in your life? You think God's too big to meet your need, heal your body, provide for you, work in your life? It's not God. You've been given sonship. Now, ladies, that's, that's not gender-related. That's authority-related. So it belongs to all of us. We have that. We're not any, no longer are we shut off from the citizenship of heaven. The Bible says we're fellow citizens of the household of God. We're citizens of heaven. The Amplified Bible says, but we are citizens of of the state or the homeland which is in heaven. I'm already there. I'm already there. there listen, the only thing that will, that, that will change when you go to heaven is this body that you have now will become glorified. Everything else belongs to you now. Why? Because He's our God. And we have access to everything the Father has. All you've got to do is realize and understand, hey, I'm not without hope. I've got God in this world. God, God's working with me. Not only that, it says <clears throat> we're part of the covenants of God. One of the greatest revelations I got when I got saved was found over in Galatians. And, it, and, and literally in Galatians 3, I think it's verse 29, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, ver, uh, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, verse 29. Listen, if you're in Christ, okay, when you make Jesus your Lord, you're in Christ, you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. I, I'm an heir. And see, here's the great thing about it. I don't have to be perfect to get it. Because it's not by works. It's by grace. It's because God loved us. And He gave His Son for us that we can have that in our lives. Let me show you the power of this hope okay, that, that we can access by faith. Let, let me show you this. I think this will help you. And I'm not going to read all of this. In Hebrews chapter 6, it's talking about the value of what God has done. And it talks about the value that Abraham and God made a covenant. And the Bible says that God swore by himself to Abraham regarding Isaac and his seed swore by himself. So God made a promise to Abraham. And then he said, uh, and by the way, I'm going to swear. And since there's nothing greater than me to swear by, I'm going to swear by myself. 
Now, that may not sound, that sounds, well, what does that mean, Pastor? It means that if God doesn't do what He says He's going to do, listen to me. If this thing doesn't turn out the way God said, listen to me, then God lied, and God's not a man that He should lie. He would have to, he would have to forfeit his, his, his Godship, if that would even be possible. But it's not going to happen because God's not going to let that happen. Amen. He swore by himself. He literally said, there is no higher power, so I swear by myself that my promises are going to happen. Yeah. Abraham took it to the bank. And when God told him, kill your son, offer him as a sacrifice, you know, Abraham wasn't worried about that. Not because he knew God and he was just going to obey God and trust God. The Bible says he knew, listen to this, it's so important that you hear this. He knew, listen, he knew that even if he killed him, God would have to raise him up because he'd already promised him. That's how powerful it was. And if you're in Christ, then you're Abraham's seed and you're heirs according to to the promises. Amen. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 18, the New Living Translation says this. Listen. So God has given both His promise and His oath. These two things are unchangeable because it is impossible for God to lie. Therefore, we have fled Y'all still here? To Him for refuge. And we can have great confidence as we hold to the hope that lies before us. See, this thing is totally, completely connected to your relationship with God. This is not some abstract this is your relationship with God. This is where your hope is. This is where you're hooked up. You're hooked up with the fact that he is, he is not a man that he should lie. He's not going to lie. And he swore by himself that the promises that he said would be, come to pass will come to pass. Now listen to the next verse in the, in the Passion Translation. I love this. <clears throat> we have this certain hope like a strong, unbreakable Anchor. No, this is passion. They've got the wrong translation up there. Listen to this. Thank you. We have this certain hope like a strong, unbreakable anchor. I love this. Holding our souls to God. That's where our hope is. We are anchored to God. We're not anchored to a church. We're not anchored to a ministry we're not we're anchored to god that's where my soul is anchored it's anchored to god i like what it says like a strong unbreakable anchor holding our souls to god himself our anchor of hope is fastened listen to this i love this to the mercy seat ooh <laughs> it's not listen it's not anchored to all your good, your bad, your ugly. It's anchored to the mercy seat. So what does that mean? That means you can make mistakes today and have mercy tomorrow. See, if you go read over, I've read this before over in Lamentations chapter 3. Jeremiah, he said, I remember one thing, and that is, that God's mercies are new every morning. Therefore, I have what? Hope. See, my hope is anchored in God. The fact that, that my soul is tied to God. So all I've got to do is, as a, as, a, as a person living in this body is say, now I attach my faith to what I'm already anchored to. What's already been done for me. It belongs to me. God's provided it for me. And thank God it's not based on how good I am. It's based on His mercy seat. It's based on His mercy for my life. 
I, I just got to read that again. I, I, I don't, it just, it really grabbed me. We have this certain hope like a strong, unbreakable anchor holding our souls to God himself. Holding our souls to God himself. Our anchor of hope is fastened to the mercy seat. Fastened to the mercy seat. So I want to tell you today, listen, you always have hope in this world if you're anchored to God. Now, I'm not talking about, well, I go to church. No. Are you anchored to God? Where is your anchor of your soul? Where, where are you living, breathing, operating? Because that's where your faith takes hold. We have a God in this world who's willing to help us. All you've got to do is put the key in. 1 John chapter 5, verse 4 says this. Listen. I, I, I love this. Whoever, I know it says whatsoever, whosoever is born of God overcomes the world. Overcomes the world. Anything in this world, you can overcome. Okay? Overcomes the world. This is the victory that overcomes the world. That word victory means means of success that overcomes the world, our faith. Our faith attached to that anchor of our soul to the Father, that hope gives us what we need in our lives. It gives us what we need in our lives. That's why you can be so bold to declare what does God say? What does God promise? What, does, what will God do in my life? Not only that, it says over in 1 John chapter 4 and verse 4, it says, greater is he that is in you than he who is in the world. I'm attached. My soul is attached. It is an anchor to my God. And my faith releases what God has for me in my life. And not only that, I have His Spirit on the inside of me to instruct me, to guide me, where I need to go, what I need to do, how I need to live my life. Let, let me give you one more. John chapter 16, verse 33. Listen to what Jesus said. He said, These things I've spoken to you that you may have peace. In the world you'll have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. We're not without God in this world. We have hope. We have hope. God can do something today in your life. God can work in your life today. All you need is that spark, that faith, that, that when you turn that car on, you don't know it, what's happening, but what's happening is when you turn that car on, there is a spark. It's called a spark plug, and it ignites the energy that's in that car to get you where you need to go. Same thing. You need to ignite and go forward. That's where you need to live your life. I'm anchored to God. I've got hope in this world. I've got that anchor, and it's anchored to the mercy seat. But it's, I've got to go somewhere with it. That's where my faith comes in. That's where my faith lives. Listen, here, here, here's a simple, and I'm just about finished, but listen to this. Here's a simple understanding, all right? Whatever you need, God will help you in this world. Whatever you need. Okay, you need healing. Matthew 8, 17 says, Himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. By His stripes, you were healed. That's a promise. Jesus did that. My soul is anchored to God. I receive that in Jesus' name. Listen, I'm, this is just a couple. You need... You, you need a need met in your life financially. Maybe you're struggling financially. Philippians 4.19 says, My God shall supply all your needs according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. You think that's just for a few people? No, your soul's anchored to God. You've got that hope. God will supply your needs. I got that revelation and I hounded God with it. I read it to Him all the time. 
And God started meeting my needs. It was amazing. Well, I'm just having some mental problems. Well, you know what the Bible says? Listen, God didn't give you a spirit of fear. He didn't give you that. He didn't give you a spirit of fear. He didn't give you any of that. He gave you a, a spirit of power and of love. Listen to this. And a sound mind. A sound mind. Well, I, I just need wisdom. I don't know what to do. James chapter 1, verse 5 says, If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives liberally and never gets mad at you. Isn't that good? God, I, I need some wisdom here. He doesn't look down. Well, you dummy, it's right in front of you. Just make the... No, you know what? He never... Up, I like the word it says in the King James, upbraids you. Never gets on to you about it. He just gives you the wisdom. <clears throat> well, I don't know whether I can do that or not. I know that, that it would be good, but I just don't know whether I could do Do what? what? Anything. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Any area of your life, that so your anchor is, so, is, is literally totally sold out to God. You're hooked up with God. You're anchored to God. The hope is there. All you've got to do is put some substance to it. You've got to start declaring what God says and expect that to work. You'd be amazed at what God wants to do in your life. You'd be amazed at how much further God wants to go in your life than where you are. If your soul is anchored to God. See, that's the key. So many people, they, they make Jesus the Lord of their lives, and they're going about their business. And they're trying to navigate this world themselves. Don't do that. God's got a better plan for you. He wants you to navigate it with Him by the Holy Spirit. And just put your faith in the line. Say, this is what I believe. This is what God said. This is what I'm going to see because of what God promised. My soul is anchored with Him. Bow your heads with me, please. Listen to me today. The only way your soul can be anchored to God is to make Jesus the Lord of your life. That's where our hope is. That's where our life is. That's where we live. If you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, maybe you just came today with someone. I want to tell you, this is no accident that you're here today. God wants to touch your life today. He wants to anchor you. Maybe you're, you're a Christian, but you've just been struggling in this world. Hey, it happens. It happens. But I've got good news for you. Today, God said, just turn it over to me. Cast your care over on me. If you've gotten into sin, ask God to forgive you and let God work in your life. You'd be amazed at what God can do and will do in your life if you'll allow Him to do that. While your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed, you're watching online, maybe this is you today. Listen to me. If that's you, I want to just pray with you right where you're seated today. And I want you to say, that's me. Pray for me. Lift your hand right now. Say, pray for me. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. Anyone else? Pray with me right now. Just pray this prayer with me. Say, Father, thank you. You've provided an anchor of hope for my soul. And I know that you're my God. I choose you through your son Jesus today. Thank you for working in me, working in my life to live what you want me to live, to do what you want me to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for connecting with us today on the podcast. And you know, we'd love to connect with you in person at one of our campuses in Shreveport, Louisiana, or in Lake Charles, Louisiana. You can get all the information from our website, lifeunited.church.